In this video, we're going to look at how we can protect our prompts using the triparse method. So here's how the triparse method works. The triparse method takes two input values for it to do its job. It takes a string value, the string value of some number that we want to parse, and then the variable we want to store the result, we are also going to pass inside the parentheses. Now this is an output reference parameter. We will talk about the, um, the out keyword in a future video. But we can think of this out keyword as saying, I'm passing a variable into the method, but I want that variable to hold the output of the method. It's a little weird, but let's roll with it. So the triparse method, instead of returning the parsed integer value or parsed numeric value, it's going to return it this way. It's going to take this string and try to parse the string into a numeric data type, store it in this variable. Now the triparse is also going to return a Boolean variable. It's going to a uh, Boolean value, I'm sorry. It's going to return the value true if this parse succeeds, and it's going to return false if the parse fails. So in our usage example below, I'm going to declare a variable to hold an integer value, and then I'm going to declare as well a Boolean variable to hold whether the parse succeeded or not. And then I'm going to call the triparse method. Now, you can call the triparse method from any data type. So if you wanted to use triparse to parse the string into an int, you would call int.triparse. If you wanted to try to parse a string value into a double, you would call double.triparse, and so on. So I'm calling the triparse method. I'm passing in a string to parse. So I have the string of characters for 4. And I'm going to try to get the integer value 44 out. I want to save the result of this parse in my variable x. And when I call this method, I have to type the keyword out in front of the variable that I'm passing. So I'm declaring the variable here, passing the variable here. Now, if this parse is successful, x will get the number, the numeric value 44, and parse OK will get the value true, because the triparse will return a true value. Now let's say I typed in 44x, a string of characters that cannot parse into an int. In that case, x is going to be assigned the value 0, so it gets the value 0 by default. And the parse OK variable is going to hold the value false. This method will return a false Boolean value if the parse fails. So let's look at a couple examples using triparse. All right, first of all, to refresh our memory, let's build a numeric prompt that reads in an age value, but we're going to just use the parse method. So we're going to start off, I'm going to declare a variable to hold the age, the integer version of the age, and I'm going to also declare a variable that will hold the string version of the age. Because when we call the console.readline method, the readline method is always going to return a string value. Next, I'm going to tell the user what to enter. Console.write, enter your age. And then finally, we will read in the user's result console using console.readline. Console.readline is going to return the string representation of what the user entered. And then finally, I'm going to convert the string representation into the, new, the integer representation. So I'm going to say age is equal to int.parse um, string age. And we'll print the result. Console.writeline, you are this many years old, pass in age. Okay, so we created some variables to hold the inputs, told the user what to enter, read in the user's response as a string, parsed that string value into an int, and, print, and we're printing it. And when we run this program, we will see that it works on good numeric inputs, but it fails on bad numeric inputs. So enter an age, if I say 40, we're, we have no problem. Let's run it again. When I enter kitten, well, we have a problem here because the parse method cannot parse the string kitten into an integer value. So our program is crashing. We, we're, we are throwing a format exception error 
and we're in trouble. Here's our format exception error. Input string was not in a correct format. All right, so let's see how we can use triparse to maybe clean this up a bit. I'm going to comment out our work here. Now, in this first example, I'm going to go step by step and list all the steps. And then we're going to do another example where we condense it a little bit. So when we do a protected prompt, we not only need to declare, or declare a variable to hold the eventual numeric data, we also need a variable to hold the value of the input, the, the value returned from the read line method, which is always going to be a string. And now we're going to add a third variable. I'm going to create a Boolean variable. I will call it parse OK. That's going to hold the result of the triparse method. It's going to hold whether the triparse succeeded or failed. So I have three variables. Now we're going to do the, this, a similar prompt setup. First, I'm going to tell the user what to enter. Enter your age. Next, I'm going to read in the user's input and store it in the string variable. So string age is equal to console.readline. So, so far, we're doing the same as we used to. Now the final step, what's going to change is instead of int.parse, we're going to call int.tryparse. In that int.tryparse, we are going to pass the string value we want to parse, and then we, we will put create an output reference to the val variable that's going to hold the result. So I want to parse the variable string age, which is what the user entered, and I want to parse it into the variable age. Now, we're not done here because the tryparse method also returns a Boolean value, and I want to know whether the parse su succeeded or not. So I'm going to store the result of this method into my parse OK variable. Okay. Now, because the parse OK, here, let's go ahead and print our, our output statement here, and let's see how this works. So when I enter a good value, we shouldn't have a problem. Enter your age, 40. 40, no problem. Let's see what happens when I enter in a bad value. Enter your age, kitten. And our program did not crash this time. But the output says you are zero years old. So that's not quite right. Even though the triparse protected our program from crashing, we still need to check the status of this parse OK variable to see whether the parse succeeded or not. So we can do that using some conditional logic. I'm going to say if parse OK is equal to the Boolean value true. This means the parse succeeded. And we'll attach a code block here. If the parse succeeded, I'm going to do my work and print out how old you are. Now, if the parse fails, I'm going to use an else statement here. If the parse succeeds, I'm going to print that you are however old you are. If the parse fails, so my else case, this means the parse failed. I'm going to output something different. I'm going to say console.writeline invalid numeric input. Or some type, I'm going to print some type of warning to let the user know they didn't enter a good value. So let's test this. Enter in a good value, we are good. We enter in a bad value. Now we get the response invalid numeric input. So we have protected our prompt against bad numeric values. So I'll pause here for a second to show you. Here is the syntax for creating a protected prompt using triparse. We are not only storing the, the result of the parse, but we are also storing whether the parse succeeded or failed. And then after we do our parse, we need to test whether the parse succeeded or failed. So let's put a note here. We must test whether the parse failed or succeeded. Now let's do a second example here. I'm going to prompt the user to enter in a GPA value. And this time I'm going to condense the syntax just a little bit. So a GPA value might be a double value. So I'm going to create a variable called GPA that's going to hold the final result. And this time I'm not going to create a temporary string variable. 
So here we have a temporary string variable that's only used to hold the read line result and then pass it into the try parse method. So we're going to just pass, in this example, we will pass the read line directly into the try parse method. So I have my variable that will hold the result. And then I still need my, my parse OK variable declared. But we, we've already declared it, so I'm going to make a note here. Parse OK is already declared. So we can just reuse it. Now comes our prompt text. I'm going to say console.write, enter your GPA. And then we're going to call the try parse method. So I'm going to say parse OK is equal to, now I want to parse into a double, val double numeric value this time. So I'm going to call the try parse from the double, double.try parse. And here I'm going to pass console.readline as my string to parse, and then an out reference to my GPA. So let's compare this syntax to the, the syntax above. I'm still passing a string value in, and I'm trying to parse it into a variable. But I'm going to get the string value directly from the console.readline method. So the user is going to type something in. The users, whatever the user types, gets passed into the try parse method, and then the try parse method will try to parse that string into this variable. Now I still need to test the result. So I'm going to say if parse OK is equal to true, this is a good parse. I will say console dot right line your GPA is and we'll print it out. But if the parse fails, what do we want to do? So the else case handles handles a failed parse. And we'll say console dot right line invalid input. You know, some type of message to let the user know hey, you didn't enter a good GPA value. Okay, so here's what a, we've condensed the syntax just a little bit. All we did was kept out the, or, or um, didn't declare an extra string variable to hold the console.readline result. We'll do a quick test here. So age is already working. We'll enter a GPA. If I enter in a good GPA, it goes through and it handled the double input value. If I enter a bad GPA, we handle it. So hope this helps understanding how to use triparse to protect a numeric prompt.